Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews. We're like a book club, but for movies. This week, it's a True Grit Showdown with the Duke vs. the Dude. Which one is better? You'll find out. We also bring you movie news at the end of the program. This week, we have Jonathan Charney, James Hello. Stevens, and the strange dude in the lower left-hand corner, Ryan Preston. This week was Ryan's pick, and he picked both True Grits. One made in 2010, the other one made in 1969. So it's the Duke versus the Dude, as we said in the opening. So, Ryan, what are these movies about? Um, okay, well, both of them follow the exact same plot, uh, pretty much exactly. They're both based off of the novel, uh, whose author I cannot recall off the top of my head. Um, they both center, uh, center around a young girl, Maddie Ross, whose father was killed by a man, Tom Chaney, and then she goes out after him. Uh, to Fort Smith, I believe it was, and hires uh, U.S. Marshal Rooster Cogburn. Yep. Um, and then they go out and try to find uh, Tom Chaney. That, that's basically the, the, the summary of it. One, obviously, starring John Wayne uh, yep. kind of later on in his Western career. And then the other, you know, Jeff Bridges, who... I think it was towards uh, the end, wasn't see, it? Was, I mean, I don't think he, he's really done. He, uh, John Wayne died in 1978, 1980. So I think it was 10 years before the end of his career. Because The yeah, Shootist, right. the shootest, which was John Wayne's the very last movie, if I remember correctly, was like 78. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, was well, I meant off. towards the end um, of his Western career. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, this, I think, was the only one that, that earned John Wayne an Academy Award. I mean, after, you know, X amount of years doing, you know, millions of western yeah. movies i mean yeah. at a time when they lot. were churning out probably 50 or 60 a year yeah uh, so um uh, oh sorry oh no please. i was gonna say I, I i'll jump in right here um this is the first time seeing either of them um, oh really okay so i did kind of a typical compare and contrast the difference between the two that i saw mm-hmm. um one one thing that and i did just i thought i did the major scenes the things that stuck out between both movies and one of them was the court scene in the 2010 was different. The, the first thing they introduced was the state's lawyer or whatever. It was a really fat guy you couldn't understand. At least I couldn't. Right. Um, and everything else in that was literally the same, almost verbatim. They used the yep. same lines, the, right. well, I go backwards when I back up type of thing. Yeah, same jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't do any good if it ain't, you know, loaded and yeah, cocked. Cock. Yeah, <laughs> the same exact lines, which I wasn't really expecting. I mean, in all honesty, I figured they would tweak it just, you know, for modern audiences, but... A lot of these scenes are exactly the same, which I was really surprised. Um, I mean, do you think it? Do you think it's it's lack of writing, or or is it kind of a, a a nod to just really fantastic, you know, story writing in the first place? I actually, you know, I'll let John go. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a couple of different things. Um, I think it's a difference between maybe they wanted to stay true to the book and mm. stay true to the movie, so there's not a lot of deviation. I think there. And right. I think and this I is. I haven't seen the book, so I mean that could be right along with what goes on there. And this and this is still uh, this is still a little bit of family friendliness in here. So I'm assuming you know it still sticks with with that. Well, well and as what I recall, it was right before the John Wayne uh, was right before uh, the Wild Bunch, uh, Sam Peckinpah's movie, mm. which kind of changed. You know, the way people looked at westerns with the whole kind of blood and gore aspect. I mean, you know, people getting. I mean, there was a lot of buckets of blood. Yeah. yeah. Movies. So, but before and, that, know, it wasn't really like that before. Yeah, before that, they did that. They they, they did the, the focus on the gun. The next scene, the guys holding the wound right. type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Never saw any wounds. It was always the dust kind of blowing off the guy's shoulder. Oh, that, that or sort of or, or the bullet catches. Oh. Yeah. Or you saw. Oh, or, right. You know. Or you might have seen a stain of something after the the shot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> the the other thing I noticed that I thought was interesting is there's no introduction of the father. Um, the very the first one in 1969 gave you a little bit of the father to show how much she cared the, the little bit of familiar uh, you know fatherly you know how she loves the interaction right this one just goes straight and he killed my father you know right yeah she she has a little bit of narration but it seemed to kind of kind of roll through the first 20 minutes of the movie of the 69 movie you know real quick like maybe in about three minutes oh yeah they they skipped a, a lot of the the well, very uh, well, introduction I thought. There also was a couple scenes added in oh, the yeah. later one. So, you know, I think they decided that with how much of her complaining and whining and, and all that stuff about her dad being killed would show. 
how yeah. much she really cared about her dad. True. Kind of figured. I kind of thought that's why they did that, but you know, no. And, you know, and they had kind of a, a going back and telling the story from from her older perspective, yeah. kind of thing. You know, going. Uh, so I mean, it was it was kind of just like, hey, this is what happened. This is where the story started, kind of right when she got to uh, Fort Smith. It's just I think it's just uh, it's the different style of storytelling. Yeah, and that's what it comes down to. The other one I thought was interesting is the buff played by Matt Damon in the new one and uh, Glenn Campbell. Le <laughs> buff. Glenn Campbell in the the, the old one. Le buff. Is the scene the scene where they smoke him out of the house? Uh, he doesn't show up. I mean, he's off and on. Um, in the in the old when they're, yeah. they're chasing through the Indian territory. In the first one, he's always there. Yeah. And by the way, to comment, Glenn Campbell sucked in that movie. Yeah. He was the, there was there was a monotone acting job. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was it was it was very uh, okay. This is how I, I read my dialogue, kind of yeah. stuff. And Matt Damon, I think, copied him exactly because they thought this was the worst job I've seen him in ever. Um, first Western, I think he's ever been in. In it. Yeah, I'm pretty. Familiar. I don't know. I think it is. I mean, I have to look it up, but I'm about a 99 percent certain it is. And the other one, I the the one thing I thought was a major departure from the original was the relationship between Maddie and. What's his name? Rooster. Rooster Cogburn. Rooster. Cogburn. Because I had I wrote it down differently. Um, that that relationship is completely different. Um, yeah. Towards the end of the 1969 <laughs> one, there was a uh, uh, they they uh, I don't know how you describe it. Almost like a love relationship. Yeah, it was kind of like more yeah. like a brother or yeah. uncle type of thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Um, and, Rather and, than the crush that Maddie has in the late one. Oh yeah, and the late one she hardcore crushed on him, and he didn't care. She just, he just said, I'm done with you, you know, and went off to drink. I wouldn't say so much about that, but, you know, actually from what I've read as far as history goes of the actual Rooster Cogburn, he would have been the more of like, later chick, I'm going to go drink. That's kind of what it seems like in the, in the way that history portrays him. Yeah, and the, the last point I have is I'm actually surprised how much the plot points are similar. Um, between two movies, 1969 and 2010, I honestly thought that this type of slow-paced storytelling was dead in Hollywood, especially to have an ability to actually keep you interested scene to scene. Yeah. Um, well, I think Coen Brothers sort of proved they could do that with uh, No Country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is a great movie. We're, we're going to definitely have to yeah. put that on my list. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was, overall, I was impressed that the two movies are dead similar i think but the, the new one has more of the new school gritty storytelling where the old one still has the the mythical old west style right and i think i think that the main difference though between the duke and the dude scum is is john wayne really he was the same personality but just turned up more yeah um and yeah, yeah. And uh, is it Jeff Bridges? Yeah, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Uh, it's not a copy of the uh, of John Wayne's. I, I don't know quite where like the mix of it was. Okay. But I, I thought it was it was a John Wayne esque. Well, it was. I think it was his version of a uh, of 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 that. I mean, somebody like it was the dude in in, in the western. Yeah, I mean, really, like who who loved to drink. Uh, I, I loved. Uh, Jeff Bridges' uh, take on on Rooster, dude, it was it was to me much more, you know, broad than than sort of just kind of like I have the code of the West, but I kind of like to drink, but but I'm gonna take you under my wing, you know. And then, it, like you said, they ended up really developing that relationship, whereas it was kind of one sided on on Rooster's uh, side or on on Maddie's side because Rooster was just like, all I really wanted to do, all to do was be left alone so I could drink. That's that's it. And I, and this is, you know, this is sort of a prospect that kind of gets me to, you know, like, like feel like a, like a marshal still and, and then gets me money so I can drink some more. I thought the um, newer one was more true to life, actually. Just, it was, it was disinterest on his part, uh, in, in the 2010 version. Um, yeah. It was, they kind of sold it to me. Um, okay. Yeah. I got you there. And then, you know, and the, the, the old one, it was, uh, it was much more like, like, you know, like you said, like the, kind of the uncle or the, the father-daughter yeah. kind of relationship. I was going to say brother-sister type relationship. But... Eh, I don't know. I mean, he, he, he sort of had that, uh, yeah, probably just kind of a ball-busting uncle would be the best way. Yeah. Or or an, a way older brother. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. Uh, uh, what else you got, Brian? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Um, Were you done? Yeah, I, no, I was I finished. The, uh, I, I wanted to point out the difference between kind of the the – there was a little more of the, the, the subtle comedy 
in the Coen Brothers version, uh, which they're kind of notorious for throwing in just these little these little smirk kind of moments. Um, like the uh, the hanging scene was was obviously much longer in the Coen Brothers version. The two guys, well, except for the Indian, the Indian starts talking, and they just immediately put the bag over his head. <laughs> and Indicative of the times, and and just kind of just like, oh wow, that's. That's kind of dark, but dark funny, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they sing an Amazing Grace in the first one. Really yes, they did sing Amazing uh, Grace in this, and the other one, and then, uh, um, oh gosh, they did something different, I thought, in the, in the newer one, but I don't remember. <laughs> Which scene? The scene where they were hanging. They were, the crowd was singing a song in the first one. Well, Amazing they, they were... Grace, and then the then the uh, Coen Brothers uh, was the uh, Coen uh, Brothers. Lee, Lee. Uh, I don't remember. Anyway, Don't by the everlasting second. water or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, something like that. But that that the whole anyway, scene I thought was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. They were uh, the the the, uh, the court scene was much more. We'll see what, what, what the point I wanted to make was the characters in the Coen Brothers seem to be much more much more colorful and broad and big and you know. There's uh, more development there. The, the, the lawyer for the uh, the prosecution was so damn funny. I can't think of the actor's name, but I've seen him in a ton of things. Great character actor, but it was it was hysterical. Um, I thought uh, Jeff Bridges' character was much more deep and kind of had a lot more going on sort of behind the eyes than, than John Wayne's, like you said, sort of an exaggerated version of the character he's been used to playing. Um, and then the chick that played Maddie Ross in this one, who I think was actually 14. Yeah. She yes, she actually beat. is. I, I think actually she looked so around. damn good. Uh, I mean, play the part like only a 14-year-old could think to play that part. You couldn't get somebody older and have them say, and say, hey, act like a 14. They would think, okay, how did I used to do this when I was 14? And they would, they would fuck it up pretty royal. Yeah, they would make it a little like, exaggerated. Right, but she had this kind of like... <coughs> She was really smart, so she had a little bit of arrogance, but then she still had that kind of childlike sort of like, like, oh, I think I got myself in too far in a couple of moments, but then still kind of headstrong. And yeah, yeah. It was a great, great portrayal of that character. Sounded damn near exactly like the 1969 version. I don't know. I kind of closed my eyes when I was watching the John Wayne, and I, it sounded very, very similar as, as far as the syntax and, and, and uh, dialogue delivery. So uh, I was gonna ask you, what was your favorite scene? Because my my still my favorite scene in the entire movie is when when she was trying to sell the horses back. Oh yeah, absolutely. In both <laughs> in both movies, that scene was really, 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 truly well written. Um, slightly different uh, in the the Coen Brothers as far as you know the the words used, but the the premise and the points that she was making were exactly the same in '69 as they were in 2010. You know, I want the horse. Here's the 300 for the ponies. Um, you know, or whatever the uh, price was, and Oh man, it was it was a great little negotiation, um, and then okay, the last guy I wanted to bring up was the um, the guy in the bear suit. It what was that guy? That was it the ra that, that was guy. the most random scene in the entire movie. I loved it. One of my favorite scenes um, when he asked if either of them needed medical attention. I almost fucking pissed myself, man. No, see, it my favorite part of that whole th of that whole conversation <laughs> is I've already taken his teeth. I will humor an offer for the rest of him. <laughs> right. I'm like, what, just, what are you gonna do? <laughs> the body. The spectrum of characters that the Coen brothers can, can kind of just, like, here's the situation, but then here's this little bit of relief, just kind of randomly, but, but, you know, always sort of following the story never taking up too much time but you're always just kind of like what's going on here and then the little turn of, of him coming through uh just killed me i love yeah. that shit. I, I love the i love there was no explanation for the hanging dude they just yeah. introduced him and that's it i thought that was hilarious yeah yeah i do not know this man <laughs> yeah talk about a hard introduction it's like i just like the fact that he sends her up the tree to cut it down like why no aren't you up here doing this because i don't climb trees very well and and when she, and when she did cut him down, her face when the tree started flexing back up, it's like, oh, yeah. uh oh, yeah. why'd they hang him so high? Probably because they think it make him more deader. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh yeah. I, it's like it's like you're actually talking to somebody that young, and you don't want to answer all their questions, so you just give them some smart ass yeah, answer. No it's, idea how to be around. You know, teenagers or young people. He's yeah. he's really foreign to the to the idea, and you know, Labeef has his completely different. Like this is how you you know like like whip a child kind of thing. 
you know, but he's uh, got a little bit of respect for her. Like as much as he doesn't want to admit, you know, it's it's always kind of there, which which is uh, shown in the the John Wayne one is, you know, kind of pretty immediately. Like he warms to her pretty pretty quick. Yeah, um, I was gonna say there was one scene where the first time. Or the only time I think in the new one where they, she was he was getting she was getting spanked, there was a scene that she was close enough she could have actually grabbed his gun. That's what I was hoping for. I was hoping for, you know, but yeah. that, that I was let down on that. Well, okay, as far as I'm concerned on these two movies, as I, as like I said to John, is the way that they did this movie, the the 2010 version. It was pretty much an homage to the 1969 version. Oh, that, that's the way that. I look yeah. at it. And John, who had never seen them, you know, we watched the, the John Wayne one first, which I've seen both of them before. And John was asking me, like, so what's the difference in between these movies? And I'm like, well, the really only difference in between these two movies is some scenes are during the day, some scenes are at night. There's right. a slight addition of a scene here. There's not a part of a scene here and there and it's just it's really like if you've seen one of them you've seen the other one you just haven't seen it done by these actors right which which is pretty crazy because generally when hollywood does a remake it's it's either sarcastic or completely different yeah not almost verbatim the the thing that i well this one it's it's i think the coen brothers realized here's a movie that that not a lot of people are familiar with we have a chance to kind of i mean probably was one of their favorite movies i mean that's usually how those kinds of things works and the coen brothers have enough pull to be able to do that um and then they just made it like let's just let's remake true grit and you know, obviously, this one enjoyed a hell of a bigger budget than than yeah, the original. Yeah. You know, so they had some more things to play around with, and 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 really get the 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 feel of everything right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they really just wanted to make John Wayne's movie again. Yeah. And I actually did enjoy uh, Jeff Bridges' interpretation because I see it as an interpretation of the character. Yeah. It's it's not a true. It, it's not it's, a copy. It's not a copy of John Wayne's performance. Right. It's his interpretation of how the character would be. Yeah. And I think he did a great job. Uh, I do like John Wayne's interpretation of this character. But I do like Jeff Bridges as well. And my favorite scene, guys, is the court scene. The court <laughs> scene where, where he's being introduced. And I, and I just love it because it, it shows how ridiculous lawyers were to, to these guys. I mean, they're dealing with a lot of people that are like mass murderers, killers. Yeah. You know, God knows how many of these people killed out there without that weren't even reported. And yeah. I mean, the Brewster Cogburn was a guy who went out and got these guys and brought them back. And um, I think John Wayne, yeah, very rarely he brought him back alive, but he did bring him back. Um, John Wayne's character of Brewster Cogburn actually said that lawyers came and screwed everything up. Yeah, he said way back before when I started, there was nobody coming out to defend these guys. <laughs> Yeah, and that's kind of what that whole court scene was is portraying how asinine that that was to them and the Western law system. Oh yeah, the the difference between the east uh, the East Coast versus the West and, Coast. And I always enjoyed that, especially when he's you know the char- the the comment about you know and you had your gun loaded and cocked. Well, duh, it doesn't work unless it's loaded and cocked. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. it's just that whole different mindset. Um, yeah, yeah, his it's like, look, law enforcement doesn't think the way lawyers do, and lawyers are trying to get him on something. And, yeah, you know, Bruce is sitting there like, what? I just did. Well, I, I did, did my job. job. Yeah, <laughs> what, what are you yelling at me for? And then uh, the other thing is that uh, you know, it. I think it was the second time I'd watched this movie in a in a week when this thought actually popped in my head is. Why the heck did LaBeouf want to kiss that 14-year-old girl? There's something wrong there. And then I was thinking, you know, at that time, 14, they were a woman. So in that era. I wouldn't go that far. In that era, it might have been okay, but I don't know. I still don't think so. Come on, look at John Smith and Pocahontas. Thanks, sir. Well, okay. You know, obviously, historically, you know, I'm I'm proven wrong on that point, but I mean. (laughs) 69, it was an odd scene to write. You know? I, yeah, <clears throat> but I think in the Western mindset, if you're doing a Western, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's yeah, I, pushing I, it. I, I can't speak to really what, it, what the motivation on that was. I, and, I mean, it's in both of them. <laughs> well, my, here's, here's yeah, yeah, in, in, a different, in a different context of a scene, I mean, Matt Damon's was when, he, when she woke up and he was sitting there. The other one was in the dining area. 
Right. And, and the, Which was and at the, least in a public place. You yeah. know what I mean? It well, yeah. Here's my, my total guess in 1969. It was more tolerable storyline wise that you could, like an older man could say, I was going to kiss you to a 14 year old. I am surprised that that was in this movie. As sensitive as that issue is, I'm surprised it didn't get censored out. That was the yeah, one I scene mean, that surprised you know, me. It's sensitive in certain contexts, but, uh, you know, uh, as far as movies... You know, I, I just want to know how comfortable Matt Damon was with that line. <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. I, I, just, I thought it was hilarious when he called her ugly after. He's like, yeah. I'm stealing a kiss. Yeah. You're ugly. But I always liked her <laughs> response to that, to that question, and it's in both of them. Both of those proposals, spanking or you kissing me, yeah. are both unpleasant thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> One is unpleasant as the next. Yeah, one. greatest so, response ever in a movie for that. Anyway, uh, the, as far as uh, the Maddie Ross character, I have to agree with you. The new one, oh gosh, I forget the girl's name. It's like Mila something or something. I forget. But she's a fourteen-year-old girl too. I think she was born in six, ninety-six or something like that. Oh, freaks me I, out. I, isn't that so scary? Yeah, it's like. I, you're almost like old enough to drive. How? What's wrong here? It's a Haley. Is yeah. it Haley, Haley Stenfield? Steinfield? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, she did a great job for being as young as she is. Fucking nailed that role. She did. She really did, and she did a lot better job than the other girl. And uh, John was mentioning that you know, John Wayne had never met. A worse actor than this girl. It, it <laughs> says, yeah, it says in the IMDb notes because I was I was that, looking up quote. I, I was looking up the information and he originally wanted for something somebody Carpenter to play it, and, and apparently him, <laughs> apparently him and the, the 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 chick who played Maddie Ross in the first one did not get along because it was literally like I have never seen a worse actress in my life type of quote. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so much the fact that I he mean, was. I, I'll, I'll kind of agree. I mean, look, obviously it was film and you couldn't take as many takes as you can now but but those are the ones that they kept and you know weren't weren't exactly yeah. the best i mean it was yeah. it was just a great great written character she did a lot better than glenn campbell did in the first one true god that's such a so anyways um yeah and I, i'm not i was never a fan of the labouf character no i thought it was kind but of a i think character. matt damon did a lot better even though it just was so awkward it was still an odd like character it was, it was just awkward i describe it as woody it was a very stiff yeah. character and yeah. i am a matt damon fan just not of that one. Oh, sure. Wait, 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 wait. I love the scene between them when they're at oh, the yeah. campfire, you know, going back and forth between, you know, Texas Ranger campfires, only yay high, and, you know. No, I, high lo high I, high I high love high Rounders. High. I thought Rounders was Oh, a great that's movie. right. It's Ben Affleck you don't like. Yo, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I forgot you don't like his partner. Ugh. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, Ben Affleck cannot act without Matt Damon right there holding him and feeding him a bottle. <laughs> hey, I've, I've made the point before, or without Kevin Smith writing his dialogue. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, I got one last point okay, and okay. and this one is, you know, uh, um I I really liked the remake quite a bit, but except for the howling of leaning on the everlasting arms at the end of the movie. I thought the ending in the remake was better than the than the hymn that they sang at the end of the of the yeah. remake. Right. That, that whoever sang that howled that. I don't remember that howled part. Howled it. And then uh, the other one where they actually sang "Amazing Grace" and went through a few of the lyrics. I did enjoy that, but so uh. so I gave this movie. I okay, gave. Hold on, are we? Okay. Uh, I just gotta ask because I we sorry folks we didn't discuss this beforehand. Are we grading them together? or Are we grading them separately? We might as well grade them together. Well, I mean, yeah, let's grade them together. It's the same damn movie, pretty much. Well, here's I'll, I'll say this about it though. Look, the the first one, watching the first one, made me want to watch the new one. Okay. So here's here's the thing, because um, we're definitely gonna have to do this in the future with the amount of remakes Hollywood's reproducing now. Okay, I got a better. Should should oh sorry. I, I actually figured out a better way of doing it. Okay, let's grade them together, and then say <laughs> which one we prefer. That'll work. Yeah. Okay. That'll okay. work. I then I guess I'll start off. I gave this I gave both of them actually a three to five. Um I I liked both of them. Um, um I, I thought they could have done a little more, mainly just I just want to see that little girl shoot the buff. That's the one thing I wanted to see. I just wanted to see death by him you know, by her on him. Um overall I thought it was a three out of five. It's a strong movie. Um I think it's cool that they did kind of a homage to 
one of the greatest, if not greatest of all time, Western actors. Yeah. Um, I'm you know there's a couple of guys on my list for that, but he was definitely on the on the top. Yeah. Um. So if for me it was a three out of five, and far as which one I like better, that's a hard mix. I I, I have to admit I'm I'm still a fan of the traditional Hollywood Western, like they yep. did in this one. Um. You know I'm gonna have to go with the original. Okay. I I, I like the original better. Oh, that's perfect. I'll step up to bat and let Ryan have the, the final say here. Um, that would uh, put you on. Okay. Uh, I give it a 3 out of 5. I give both of them a 3 out of 5. Um, honestly, I, I do enjoy these two. These two together. Um, I, I think it did exactly what it was out to do, and, it, and that's what gives it a 3 out of 5. But I would have to say that I actually prefer the remake. Really the original, and that's a rare thing for me to do, is to say that the the remake is is more enjoyable than the original. Uh, yeah, I just gotta say I do. I mean, there are some little points as to it, but I've already made those, and yeah, I'm actually shocked by that. I was too. Heck, this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if, if I, I'm guaranteed if you haven't watched all these episodes, is knowing James as long as I have, I've never heard him actually utter those words in the same sentences. I like the remake better. Right, yeah. right. Generally, yeah. generally the remake was insert you know explicit <laughs> comment here, right. explicit or really bad. Yeah. Exploded, deleted, exploded. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. So I uh, generally I'm shocked by that because I've literally never heard him ever ever say that. Um, Ryan, what what about you? Um, I've never heard him say it either. No. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm a I'm pretty much of the same mind of James on this one. I I really. I'm really partial to Jeff Bridges. I've been a huge fan ever since I saw Big Lebowski back in the day. That's one of my favorite comedies. Um, I love the Coen Brothers styles uh, uh, choices that you know that they always make. Um, I love the way that they they make a movie look. Um, and it the, the the old one fit their tone level so well that I think it was really easy for them to do it. And I think yeah. it was made by a couple of fans. And, and it almost seemed like the people that were in the movie had never seen it before just because the, the characters were so so kind of fresh and, and, and not anything like, like uh, trying to do what, what anybody else did before. You know, it was, it was this, is, this is our version of what I think this should, this should be, you know. Which is um, definitely so not I, easy. I'm going to go definitely three out of five on, on both of them. I think it's, I mean, it's definitely a fun movie. You know what I mean? One of those that I'll, I'll throw on every now and again. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's been better westerns made, but I mean, it's just a, a, a damn, damn fine film. Uh, so yeah, three out of five, and I'll, I'll, I'll prefer the the remake, which is <laughs> wow. Top. Yeah, that, that's a rare thing for you too. Pilot. I thought you were gonna side with John for a while there. No, I, I, dude, I love John Wayne, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna side with John on a couple of things too. Like like I, I love the old spaghetti western kind of stuff. I mean, you James and I have talked many a time about our love for for Lee Van Cleef and some, uh, you know, some uh, uh, few dollars more and and Man with Fifth No Name and, and well, Rio James. Bravo. And... Well, I'm thinking this is this is a, a semi discussion for another episode, but because yeah. John Wayne is really pre. Spaghetti Western. Yeah, he is. Sure, yeah. He's, well, he's, he's, yeah, he's, a, the, he's a, a studio... Well, of course I'll go it? into why they call them Spaghetti Westerns later when we get well, into this. because but... the Italians started hiring well, everybody. I wasn't going to go there right now, but, you know. So, so yeah, kind of... So what about you? So you're on Movie News. And any, uh, so do you... Uh... Well, um, pretty much what I did this time is it's... We're getting to the last few months of this year. And kind of figured that we should actually discuss movies that are coming out towards the end of this year that should be ones that we should keep our eyes out for. Okay. Or movies that are just kind of coming out that I'm like, yeah, see what you guys think, you know? Check your lo local listings for these for the following films. Okay, so uh, the first one that I'm going to bring up is coming out September 6th, so that's this right, now. right now. Right uh, um, now. This one is titled VHS. I've heard of this, and I don't know why. And it's coming out from Russia, which is always a kind of curious little thing. Hmm. And uh, the premise of this is that a group of people are get, get hired by a third party to rob a house to steal a v VHS tape. Now, basically, some shenanigans happen, and they see some crazy stuff on all these tapes in this house, and it turns out to be a horror movie. 
That's usually when I use the word shenanigans, um, in case you audience members haven't noticed. I did. Um, yes, Mr. Preston, on the front row. Yeah, so... Where did they find a VHS player? Um, <laughs> well, what they, what they kind of say in the more in-depth thing is that they stumble over a bunch of broken and kind of uh, TVs all throughout this house, find a body, and I'm assuming that there's a VHS player in the house. Okay, so it doesn't take place in, and, in a long time ago. And, uh, by the way, this also is in Russia... I'm sure Fair they point. still have beta. <laughs> real Sorry, real. Russia, but I'm sure that you guys can find a beta player a lot easier than we can. Hey, I think I have one somewhere around here. Okay, September 14th. It is old guy tech. Resident That's true. Evil Retribution is coming out this month. Now, <sighs> hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait guys. You're looking out for this, James? Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to start to question your... Hold your on, judgment. hold on for a second. Let me finish what I'm saying here. Now... <laughs> The interesting the thing for me, shit, uh, John, we, 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 I need to to fire this man right here. The just, interesting thing for me is that definitely an intervention. This right. movie already has an expected seven out of ten on IMDb. In it, there's an expected ratings. I mean, like as far as well, just, like, uh, if it's coming out this it. month, I've noticed that IMDb already has ratings up. One one word: drive. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that, too. I'm like, really? And how many Resident Evil movies have they come out with yet? I think at least six. I, You know, I have to say, I really like the first one. I, I actually well, own the first one. because everybody wanted to see well, the I, first one. I and, actually and, like the first two. I'll give you. Know, I'll give you the second one. The first one. two. The, the, the rest just are this 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 almost rip off of '80s classic action movies that just. But the surprising thing for me is, I had no idea this movie was coming out this month. Oh yeah. No idea. I think nobody had the idea that it was coming out this month because everybody's sick to death of seeing Resident Evil. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was shocked to find that, so I had to jot that one down. Now, what's, what's like, the name of this one? Resident Evil. Uh, Retribution. Retribution. From Holy from crap. from yeah. what I've read about it, it's about I guess every good guy that's died that comes back to kill Mila Djokovic. By the way, I never thought I'd be tired okay. of Mila Djokovic, but I am. Oh, I know. Yeah. Um, Go back okay. to being Lilu. Okay. Well, that sounds like a really you know. You know, just really thick and in-depth, rich plot. <laughs> uh, actually, do you, do you want to hear what I wrote down as the plot of this movie? Please. Sure. Mila is back as Alice. <laughs> <laughs> what else a, you got to say? True story right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> what about so? What about the other ones on your list? All right, so I got a... All right, now I kind of find this one interesting. Is it, Coming out next month, October 19th, Paranormal Activity 4... There's Those a... movies have been made so fast. Wait, I a, know. There's a second, third, and fourth. There's a second, third one. The second one came out really quick. I think they tried to capitalize on on what it did I, in exactly. the theaters originally. Now, wow. But, now, but look, the original one. I said this before. Like the original Paranormal Activity was combination pretty interesting story with unbelievable marketing. Yeah, like the, what they did with like this is true, and they didn't really leak anything really towards it. And then how they made the movie with you know thanks to the San Diego PD, you know for allowing us the footage. There was no opening credits. Yeah. There was no final credits. It was a brilliant way that they marketed the movie. So was it this was. like was this the like and third one? You know that it's all bullshit. Well, and, and where's where's the thrill? So well, and, the what? last one. Hold on, hold on. And I kind of thought thought this one was kind of interesting. Is they actually put out Paranormal Activity four. It looks like in some of the snapshots that they had, they're going back to the first style. And on even IMDb, there is no plot released. Hmm. Okay. So what? Where is this? On and the, this is coming out in like a month. So what is this on the the Blair Rich, the Blair Witch scale of marketing? You know, I mean, it was due to. I thought it was it was equal, if not better. I mean, like wow. Like what people thought, obviously Blair Witch had it had it first, and they you know did it first, but. That being said, people know about the Blair Witch marketing uh, sort of sort of tactic, and then fell for it hook, line, and sinker for Paranormal Activity. Yeah, you know. So uh, I, I thought it was was great. And then again, with the uh, with the way that they got no name actors, they filmed it. Whoever did the cinematography, you know, really had it down. Like as far as keeping the continuity of this is where when the camera moved, there was no boom shots, there was no dolly shots. It was everything was. Was this sh is this shaky cam? I've never I've never seen any no, of them. No, it's they're actually pretty steady cams the because they're like, like uh, the original. They they changed the ending in the theaters um, to something kind of CGI, which which was really shitty. The original ending for it 
was so so subdued and so fucking possible dude that it really kind of creeped you out even though you knew you know it was bullshit you know it was it still kind of gave you that damn man that's that's nutty surprised they changed it then yeah i'm really surprised i i thought i don't know i think they they it had a little bit of success wherever it did and then some studio got a hold of it and said it needs this ending so yeah. uh, is uh any other ones on your list yeah i got a couple on my list uh daniel craig is back it's the new uh, Bond and Skyfall coming out November ninth. Yeah, November ninth. And this is the third Bond he's been. Yeah, and the, the pretty much the plot on this one is this time he's going to be tested by M's past, you know, type of thing. I, I'm actually legitimately well, I excited. Like Daniel I can't Craig's wait. Version we're of Bond. all agreeing we were screwed over by Quantum of Solace, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. But we're still kind of agreeing that we're. Totally I'm a, I'm a Daniel fan. Craig fan. I also uh, enjoy. Oh, I cannot think of his name right now, and I'm so mad. Brian, tell me what Bond I like the best. Roger well, Moore. Do you like Thank you, Moore. Timothy Dalton. Aren't you a Tim Dalton fan? <laughs> uh, you're lucky you're so in Pasadena. <laughs> Pasadena. Maybe? Hey, close enough. So and then uh, the December fourteenth. We've already discussed this one a couple times. Which one? But it's uh, the Hobbit. All three. All f- are is it actually officially three now? They they just oh, I wish I wrote it down, but they just recently said it's three, and they gave the first, second, and third one I guess new titles. The second and third one new titles. Huh. So it's officially a trilogy. So it's officially going to be word for word. Wow. So I'm I assuming. Saying, are they adding anything? Or are they just literally they had from that whole story up? From what I've heard, they've had so much footage that uh, Peter Jackson was like, let's just do uh, another movie. Yeah, so, well, so I mean, what, well, hell, when he came out with Lord of the Rings, it was, what, 14 to 20 hours on each movie of bonus footage? Yeah. And stuff? So, 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 ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring my copy of The Hobbit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, December 14th also, we have also another one that, you know, I've always enjoyed some plays that they've turned into movies. And, I mean, I'm kind of a fan of them, but it's a very select few. Like, I'm not really into, like, Sound of Music. I did Rocky kind of Rocky enjoy Rocky. The King and I. No. We both know he loved Lovers of um, or or Mizabob or whatever it's I called. I like uh, Phantom yeah. of the Opera and Fiddler and Les Miserables is coming out. Am I the only one that can say that? I can't right now. I'm too tired. Anyway. Um, so I'm actually kind of interested in seeing this one. It's it's got Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, and Anne Hathaway. But how I'm can... sorry, I, I missed this. What what are they? What stage performances being a movie? Le, Les Misérables for oh, the second a... time. Yeah, they're remaking the Les yeah. Misérables. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I kidding. Can't... I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's coming out December 14th. Uh, this is going to be directed by Tom Hopper, and he did the King's Speech. That's the really only oh. thing that is like. To his credit, as far as the movie goes, um, I actually enjoyed the King's Speech. Hell yeah! I, okay, I didn't know if you had I've seen it or not. It to me, so I haven't had a chance to see it, it forever, and then I watched it, and it was awesome. Yeah, I actually enjoyed it. I've seen it twice. It's actually saying something for that type of movie. It's kind sure. of a slower drama, but it was really well done. So we're we're I was gonna say so, we're, we're kind of running out of time here. Are I you... got one last one, and this is gonna be not the last of the year. It's Quentin Tarantino. Can anybody tell me what it is? Django Unchained. Yep, and that's the last one. So I'm just reminding you guys about, you know, The Hobbit. And let... Are we going to meet in Fresno again and go watch that flick? We probably should. I'm dude. down with that. I, I, let's do it. There, There <laughs> is one sad thing I wanted to say is to give my condolences to uh, Michael Clark Duncan's family. Yes. Oh, yeah, um, this, he, he was an actor I've, I've always enjoyed. Um, yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I remember, actually, I think as, as somewhat of an adult, you know, uh, film goer, um, one of the first dudes to ever kind of make me ball up and cry, you know what I'm saying, in a movie with with Green Mile, dude. I was gonna say, it better have been Green Mile. Was so <laughs> bloody good. I I have to have it. I have to have to be honest. I haven't seen the Green Mile. I've been saving it for the show. Blasphemy. Really? I've wow. been saving it. Um, but I, I I always liked Michael Clark Duncan, even yeah, in that uh, that the Affleck movie that won't be mentioned. Um. So I I just I just wanted to give. Hmm? Yeah, we we want to send our condolences. I just want to give my condolences. Just just such yeah, a shame yeah. to a great actor, a Hollywood lost. You know, another Bondy who you know I had great potential to do many movies for. Too young, nicest guy. Everybody loved everything that he was ever in. You know, even was, though I think most yeah. people confuse him with Big Grimes. <laughs> well, no, dude. I think ABC or or, or some some network te- uh, television place. I don't know if this was local or if it was national, but they confused. They put up Michael Clark Duncan. You know, passed away at the bottom of the screen, and then in the corner, 
they had uh, uh, Terry Crews, which is basically just another muscular black guy. <laughs> you might remember him from the Expendables. He's Are you serious? Wow. They wow. put his picture in the corner. <laughs> oh. You know, so oh. I'm sure his family might oh. have had freaked out or somebody, you know. Oh, man. Uh, so, like these a, people, they're false information. Like, See, everybody has to be the first one to break the news now, so they, they step on each other's toes and give false information. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, Real Flix Reviews gives our condolences and goodbye to a great actor. Yeah. yeah. And to round everything else out, I gave True Grit both versions a 3 out of 5. James gave both your versions a 3 out of 5. And Ryan gave it a 3 out of 5. And I'll stick to the original. James and Ryan both did the did the same thing and said, "Go for the remake." And next week we're doing the Born Legacy. Yep. So that's in the theater. So, ladies and gentlemen, rush out the theaters if you haven't already seen it, so you can catch up for this next week's show. And see you next week. Hi, I'm Rob Charney, Old Guy Tech TV, and I'm here to talk to you today about Windfall. Windfall is your local paper for classified ads for what's happening in El Dorado County for just about anything that has to do with El Dorado County. And and they've got some great specials going on right now. As a matter of fact, they have a business special that is stated so that it's a 12-week business text ad for only $60. You can't hardly buy anything for $60, let alone a 12-week ad. Now, of course, you can always add to that or shorten it, whatever you think you want to do. They'll work with you 100%. They'll put the artwork together for you. They'll put the layout together for you. All you need to do is get a hold of them, and they'll take care of all the work for you. And trust me, it works. And we've been with the Windfall for a long time, and it's a great relationship between Old Guy Tech TV and News 44 TV and the Windfall. And we want to make sure that you get to take the same kind of advantage. The paper's incredible. Uh, I really highly suggest that you, you go ahead and you get pick up a copy of just about anywhere. They're everywhere, any restaurant or uh, in front of the drug stores and many other stores. You'll find the windfall there, and it's a great deal. And let me tell you a little bit about uh, Rob and Tina. They've worked very hard to make this newspaper something that they're very proud of. They've done it through the School of Hard Knocks. They're incredible people. They work really hard for you. They want to share their experiences for you. And uh, I can't think of a better two people to, to uh, really take advantage of this and, and make sure that you get your ad into their paper because we sure like it. And I know a lot of others out there who like it as well. And one of the things is they decided that they wanted to move to a larger facility. They were cramped. If you ever saw their old office, there's barely any room for people to move. So they had an opportunity to move to a new location, still in Diamond Springs, and they have a uh, open house. And that open house is uh, September 26th, uh, starting at 5 p.m. over here in Diamond Springs. Uh, and you know what? If you can come on by and just say hello, that would be great. Take advantage of some of the food and the music and the cars and some of the other stuff that's out there and really enjoy yourself and have a great time. So I'm looking forward to it. Old Guy Tech TV will be there. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk to you. If you've got a business or you have a message you want to get out, you come and see us. We'll make sure that it gets done. So don't forget, shop the windfall. Everybody needs a windfall.